squirrels, King Kamatha. Wow. I mean, wow. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but honestly, this is the best MonsterVerse movie so far. Yeah, even better than Kong Skull Island and my favorite, Godzilla 2014. It might just seem like recent bias. But honestly, some of the most underrated aspects of the Godzilla films from the 60s and 70s, something that Adam Wingard, the director, was pulling from, are front and stage here with the human cast, which honestly I think is the most well-rounded, even if they don't have the emotional arcs of previous films. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Bernie is a goat. He's such an enjoyable character to watch. Maybe it's just because I really love the actor behind him. And the story between Kong and Gia's small little story as well is really nice. It isn't as emotionally resonating as Kong Skull Island with Hank Marlow, but overall I have the most enjoyment from it. Nothing about it really annoys me like any of the other films do. There's a scene where Kong uses Suko as a weapon against the other apes. I was laughing out loud in the theater like this was the most insane thing. Godzilla does a suplex on Kong. This movie also has the most fights out of any Godzilla movie. And nearly all of them are fantastic. I absolutely adore the Hollow Earth. Even if people don't like the direction that the MonsterVerse has taken. I'll always love and prefer the 2014 take of how they use the monsters. But I don't mind it here since I enjoy the other factors that this brings to the film. But then comes some of my criticisms, which I'm going to get off the bat. The CGI is the most inconsistent of the MonsterVerse movies. At times, they look unfinished. Take the opening scene in Rome with Godzilla. But supposedly from the time I'm recording this, it has the lowest budget for some reason out of the MonsterVerse. And the fact that over half the movie is just monsters really says a lot. If anything, it's more impressive that we were able to get so much special effects that didn't look absolutely garbage like The Flash. But it's still worth criticizing them for. Another thing is just how bland the soundtrack is. Considering that Junkie XL is now open to AI, it really makes me dislike this soundtrack as well. Godzilla vs. Kong soundtrack was the most bland out of the entire franchise. And nothing really stands out about this new one. Outside of the bootleg themes they give to Mothra. Yeah, Mothra's in the movie. She was changed last minute from an original creation. And you can tell from all the ADR, nobody actually says her name on screen. But I still enjoyed her for what little she had in the movie. If I can have one last complaint, Adam Wingard did say that they would bring back Doug. Doug became a huge fan favorite after he appeared for just 5 seconds in the last movie. And considering the toys showing that Suko was an ally of Doug, many of us thought that he was going to be in part of the final fight, or at least have a scene with Suko. But no, he only has one scene at the beginning of the movie with Kong, and it's really brief. And that's it. As insane as it was to see some of these cool action scenes, I really wish that they still had that idea of having Suko ride Doug into battle. It's almost as if they cut the scene. There's a part where Suko goes off on his own while Kong goes to get Godzilla. And I was thinking to myself, okay, this is where he goes and gets Doug for the final battle. But no, he just kind of comes back and throws rocks at people. While I wish there was more time to spend with them, Scar King is great. No, he isn't the most powerful monster ever. But it doesn't matter in the end. He's still a great character. He's meant to be a false king and a fraud. Ruling by dictatorship. And he has a lot of personality to him too. Shimo is also great. I wish she was in the movie a little bit more, but hey, I can take what I can get. Overall, even though the movie has flaws from a thousand cuts, almost everything, including the scenes where it's just Kong and Suko by himself for about eight minutes, really grew on me. This movie coupled with Final Wars will make for an amazing double feature of absolute insanity. I seriously don't know how they can pull off another more insane movie after this. This may not be everyone's cup of tea considering Godzilla Minus One just came out. Or for those who wanted Kong to go in a different direction. Or even just have Kong not be in this movie at all because I know Godzilla fans don't care about him. But to me, I feel like the character of King Kong was done justice here. I hope to see his character continue to grow after this. But who knows what the future holds. So yeah, pretty awesome movie. 
Go watch it. You might like it. You may not. For me, it was a total blast.